version of the this new product release by U.S. Architectural. For those of you who aren't familiar with my voice, when I have uh, a draining sinuses, this is Kerry Evanoff, your VP of Sales and Marketing, and hopefully we'll make it through this. One more presentation with a, a cough here and a sip of tea there. We're going to give you just a, a few more minutes to let everybody sign on who's, uh, who's coming up on board. <coughs> we had a good group this morning. Um, uh, well over, uh, well, we had uh, close to 100 sign-ons, which, which means we had well over 200 to 300 people who were uh, attending that session, and it looks like we're getting another fairly large group this afternoon. So we'll give you just a moment or two longer to, uh, to, to, to get yourselves all settled in here. We also had a few that, that had other appointments, and so they had to sign on to re-register re for this afternoon session. We'll go ahead and get started here. The, uh, again, we'd like to welcome you to the U.S. Architecture Lighting new product release that we're going to present for you now. This will be the, the fourth significant web, webcast that we've done since the, um, uh, since the end of July last year. So that's the fourth one here within a, just a little bit less than a year. And this may be the most significant of all, the most exciting of all, because of some of the things that uh, have gone before and, and, and what will come after. Uh, in previous uh, web, web, webcasts that we've done, or presentations that we've done, we've highlighted the fact that the goal of architectural illumination is to create an intriguing and, and dynamic lighting effect in the nighttime environment that makes the architecture stand out. In this case, the photos that we're showing you here are actually landscape, but landscape takes the place of architecture, and the two are interchangeable for the purposes of, uh, of nighttime illumination. By far and away, though, the effect that we see on the right is the most intriguing because there's no visible luminaires. All we see is lighting effect, and that's probably the most dynamic or the most well-liked representation of the two. The truth of the matter is, when it comes to site lighting and the type of work that we do on a regular basis, we have fixtures and products that are seen by day and seen by at night because of their size, because of their location within the, uh, the infrastructure. And so they need to relate to the architectural context of their surrounding area. Not only do they need to look like they belong where they are, they need to perform as well. And so as we've gone through these presentations, we've been highlighting the fact that whether the architecture is based on geometry, such as the examples here, whether the prevailing architecture is based on period styles or themes, such as we see here, doesn't really matter. What matters is that the products that are used in connection with those, those, those styles or that architecture needs to have what's called architectural relevance. The look of the fixtures of the product needs to relate to the context in which it exists. And we can certainly see by the representations in these photos that today's architecture is very bold and dynamic, um, flirts with the, the more exotic edges of, of geometry, uh, with color, and, and, and with size, and with the eclectic blending of shapes. And so the products that we produce need to be able to correspond to that, need to be able to relate to that. So at the end of July last year, one of the first products that we brought to the market or brought to you uh, to bring to the market was the camber luminaire, the wall mount luminaire, about two feet high, 24 inches high by eight inches wide in basic form with five different uh, shapes or five different models and a variety of opt perform varying optical performances depending upon how those shields and those optical models uh, which ones were selected. Now, interestingly enough, we recently attended the uh, 2010 AIA Expo in Miami, uh, Miami Beach, Florida, and had, the, uh, had four different models of the camera unit on display. We had the one, two, three, and five, being that the two and four look very similar. And probably out of all the products we had in the booth, we had a 20 by 30 space there, camber was the most noted and the, and the most sought-after fixture, most sought-after luminaire, whether they were drawn into the booth by that look first or as they transitioned through the space, they would finish up on that. Camber was the one product that got the most notice to it because it is a very unique piece as far as 
wall mount luminaires are concerned. And uh, rather exciting to us because it tells us that the architectural community is responding well to this design and really needs to have it presented to them in a, in a, in a strong fashion uh, because there's a lot of opportunity there that's left. Uh, not only did the, does the look of camber hold up well in the, in the aesthetic side of things, but mechanically it makes sense. It's a robustly built fixture. It's, uh, it's not a flimsy piece. It's all, all the components to it are cast. It uses all electronic ballast for metal halide and compact fluorescent. Uh, the luminaire mounts and seals in very solid fashion. It can be relamped without having to adjust the shields. Everything about it makes sense and is logical for the specification market and for the commercial, mar or commercial architectural marketplace. We then brought to you a completely different look in the way of bollards and the tornado bollard. Tornado bollard literally turned things upside down because it, it, looked, it looked like it was upside down. The, uh, the conical shape, which is a very tricky type of shape to work with, uh, works, works very well in many, many different types of spaces. Uh, as a bollard, it makes a, a, quite a statement, but also in looking at it as, as, as a piece, as a design element, not only does it work well from a lighting point of view, but mechanically there's no hardware to be seen on it other than the, the screws that hold the top down. And so this too drew a lot of attention at the recent AIA show for its, its monolithic appearance, as if it was carved out of a block of something, metal or stone or whatever the case may be. And the uh, internal stanchion mounting method that takes away all the visible hardware certainly drew a lot of attention for its relevance in looking to today's architecture to make it clean, uh, to take the hardware out of it, and yet make, it, uh, make a statement about the, the appearance of the product in connection with the surrounding, uh, the surrounding architectural context. The key thing here is that whatever the architectural context or design is, and today there certainly is far more expressive than we've seen in the past, the products that U.S. Architectural has been bringing to the market to address these, this, this architectural relevance have certainly filled the bill in a most dynamic way. And that's what we're going to continue to do with the presentation today. Now, we've gone with the wall mount. We've gone with a, a low-level bollard uh, luminaire. Time has come for us to look at a pole-mounted luminaire. But the question is, just what kind of shape is it that we can present to the marketplace that's different? Everything that's out there is a variation on some form of arc or some form of geometry, and certainly shoe boxes and hockey pucks have been done to death. And there are some other design elements in the way of fixtures that have been highlighted, but today we're going to show you one that you've not seen before. We're going to show you a fixture that, that is exciting in the sense that it has a very slim profile, it has a very, very elegant look to it, uh, and yet it fulfills all of the requirements for architectural relevance and performance that today's marketplace demands. So we present to you now a fixture that, uh, that you're going to thoroughly enjoy selling called Tsunami. Tsunami Luminaire is one that, that has a dynamic shape to it, from the curved arc with the electrical compartment, the barrel, the ribbed barrel, and then the arm that gives the entire fixture an uplift look. When you put it in context with today's architectural styles, the Tsunami Luminaire is, is second to none as far as its elegance and as far as its relevance to the surrounding architecture. Tsunami comes in two sizes, one size going up to 400 watt in HID, the other one going up to 150 watt in HID. The larger luminaire, as you can see by the dimension shown here, is 19 inches across the face and 37 inches from the front to the pole, the, the back end of the arm mounting to the pole. Now, at first, that might seem like a very large fixture, but when we compare that to most of the other products in the marketplace today, it's within a half an inch to an inch and three quarters of, dimension-wise of all the other luminaires that we see out in the marketplace today that don't have anywhere near the, 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 the elegance and the relevance that Tsunami does. The overall height of the optical compartment of Tsunami is also very slim. It's only six and a half inches tall at its widest point, and because of the arc shape that it has to it, it takes a lot of mass out of the luminaire, and as a result, we have a very, very slim-looking fixture, even 30, 35 feet up on a pole, or in the smaller iteration, 15 inches by 28 inches down when we go to a 12-foot to a 16-foot mounting height. So we have two different sizes of Tsunami, and, and believe me when I tell you they're packed with features that you're just going to thoroughly enjoy presenting out in the field. First, we'll start with the HID version of the Luminaire. Now, for the larger fixture, 
the uh, full size tsunami. We've had to create an entirely new set of, of, of reflectors for it because of the shallow cavity, optical cavity. It has a very wide lens opening, and we've created vertical stages for the reflector assembly to be constructed in so that we can get it up inside of that optical assembly without not compromising anything as far as performance is concerned. As a matter of fact, when we do the final when you do a final analysis, of course, the tsunami luminaire is a complete cutoff fixture with a flat glass lens. There's no light that occurs above 90 degrees uh, uh, from measures measured from vertical. But interestingly enough, less than 3% of the total output occurs above 75 degrees. So most of the output from an HID lamp with tsunami is all geared around putting that light down in the working area, the working plane in, in, in any site. And as a result, when you look at the fixture in the nighttime environment, it's cut off, it's control to minimize light pollution and light trespass is outstanding. We don't stop here, though. We also have taken advantage of the new VLED optical modules in, in when it comes to tsunami. This is a full, full-blooded luminaire when it comes to the overall uh, package that it presents, both HID and LED. And again, no light above 90 degrees. In, the case, in this case of the, with the VLED modules, less than 4% of the total light occurs above 75 degrees. And again, this grants us excellent light pollution characteristics and even better light trespass characteristics. For those that have had an opportunity to work with the um, VLED optical modules, you'll, or for those who haven't, you'll find or you have found that the house side control without any type of shielding to it is absolutely outstanding at all forms of mounting heights. Pardon me for a moment there. Clear the throat a little with a little sip. Getting into the lamping and, and the uh, optical performance or optical opportunities present with Tsunami, we've tried to incorporate and done our best to incorporate the most modern technology when it comes to both HID lamps and LED. And so we present within the lamp electrical guide a continuous homogenous piece. We don't really differentiate between here's metal halide, here's high pressure sodium, here's LED, other than to break the lamps down in the lamp electrical guide. But there are a few highlights here that bear, bear uh, calling attention to. In the case of the Tsunami Mini, the 70 watt version of the fixture and the 150 watt version of the fixture, you can get the lamps in both an ED17 medium base or a T6G12 bipin base style lamp. You can get it in uh, electronic ballast or core and coil ballast. Whole variety of options there available. Now the T6 lamps are outstanding performers not only because of their lumen output, but given the size of the bulb, the T-shaped bulb, you have very minimal interference with the optical pattern, and so you have even better um, distribution patterns and, and sharper distribution patterns that are produced with the T-lamps in this instance. We didn't stop there, though. We took it a step further. A lot of popularity has, is, is, is starting to be shown with the T9 lamps that Philips has, has put on the market are called the CDM Elites in 210 watt and 315 watt iteration. Uh, looking at the, the bare numbers on these, these lamps are 20,000 hour life lamps. In the case of the 210 watt unit, it's a 23,000 lumen lamp. The 315 watt is a 36,000 lumen lamp, both of them giving you much better than 100 lumens per watt in base form as far as the the uh, lumens generated by the lamps, and they have a CRI of, that exceeds 90. Beautiful lamps to use in the outdoor lighting market, great energy savers in this regard, and the 315 watt has the capability of also being controlled by, uh, is, is a dimmable unit, so that you can get in there and, and control light levels uh, with even the house dimming, uh, the house control auto building automation systems, or with an extra, another form of external dimming system. We've also incorporated into the, the larger luminaire the 320 and the 350 watt ED28 um, horizontal pin oriented lamps uh, to take advantage of their lumen output versus the wattage uh, draw that they have. And again, available in both um, electronic and uh, corn coil ballasts. Not to be left out of the queue entirely is the fact that we have the VLED optical modules within uh, both sizes of luminaires. In the Tsunami Mini, we use the 64 LED emitter package. 
In the, in the standard size tsunami, we use the 80 or the 120 emitter package. And here we've adjusted to show the lumens and the life expectancy based upon the optical patterns that are there, uh, system watts, etc. So you have a full package of lamps to be able to select with to use in here, the electrical data to back it up that's available for you within the fixture. Features all over the place with Tsunami. The housing itself is a cast, precision cast piece, as is the lens frame and the, the electrical compartment uh, enclosure and the arm door, which is all one piece. These pieces are all cast components for rugged durability, minimum of quarter inch wall thickness. Whether you're using the HID optics or the VLED optics, your optical system is completely sealed against any type of intrusion by dust or other types of pollutants. And in the case of the VLED optics, as we've talked in the past, the individual modules are completely sealed separate from the luminaire. We allow uh, uh, the, the optical chamber, in this case, to breathe to keep the, the, the LEDs at an optimal operating temperature. Uh, and all of the, both with the HID and the VLED modules, the optical modules can be rotated in 90 degree increments and handled just like any other luminaire that you have out, out in the field. In the case of the HID system, to access the, for relamping, there's a toolless latch mechanism that's very creative here on Tsunami. It's actually a button that you push once and it extends down. You then grab that and twist it and the luminaire door opens. To close the door, you reverse the process and then just push the button back up and it sets and locks in place. And that button's available in either black or chrome and you can call that out in order to match the style of the luminaire. And then the unitized electrical module that rests back in the barrel, barrel section of the luminaire is kept in a separate section that helps reduce the operating temperature of both components by not subjecting the ballast or driver to the heat from the lamps, by not subjecting the, the, the LEDs or the lamps to the heat from the ballast or driver, everything is kept at a, at a, at a very, very minimal operating temperature uh, and, and to get maximum life out of these, these um, elements. We also have for you a new 12-page catalog, rightfully entitled Tsunami. Get a nice artistic cover shot there. Page one and two of the, of the catalog give you the daytime view of Tsunami as well as the nighttime view to show the excellent uniformity characteristics and architectural relevance with both size luminaires. We then show, have the pages that discuss the, the HID and LED optics, VLED optics, highlighting the variety of uh, type two, three, four, and five optical patterns that are available. And as we've discussed before with the VLED optics, if we need to get more creative than that, in some instances, we can do so. The pages that you see here are the engineering features. It's actually a two-page spread that we were looking at just before we, we, we went to the catalog here, which shows a picture of the luminaire as well as the highlights uh, of the various elements of the fixture. We have the dimensions that also include wall plate mounting dimensions and the pole drilling information. You have your EPA data here and weight as well. Specifications for the luminaire in both HID and VLED trim. What we've done here is to create for the VLED version the VLED module uh, and driver fit, or excuse me, uh, specification that then replaces the reflector module, electro mo electrical module in the HID section. So by blending the two elements there, your specifier can get exactly what he's looking for in it, into his specification. Again, the comprehensive lamp electrical guide that's, that's included in the catalog. We've divided the HID and VLED luminaires up into two separate ordering uh, logics there, are methodologies there, just to simplify it. There's no other reason for it than that. Otherwise, consider this as a, as a full-blooded luminaire. Whatever type of lamp source it needs, you can get it within this, this, this family of products. And then the, the, the back cover shot for the, uh, for the Tsunami catalog. Exciting new product for you to bring to the marketplace and bring to your specifiers, isn't it? Now, when we take a look and see just exactly what's going on in architecture today, there isn't anything like Tsunami that's available to you. There isn't anything like Tsunami that's available to your client. Whether the fixture is a single, a twin, multiple mounts, whether it's HID or, or LED based, it answers the questions for today as far as aesthetics are concerned and as far as 
performance is concerned. It covers all those bases. When we released the, uh, did the release on the camber luminaire, you saw a couple of slides that came up at the end of it that kind of looked like this. Talked about design, performance, cataloging, and saying this is the new US architectural lighting. At the end of the year, when we brought out to you the Tornado Ballard, again, we wanted to reemphasize the point that when it comes to innovation and performance and quality, there's a change that's taken place here. Other manufacturers that are out there in the industry, partly due to the marketplace being as bad as it is right now, and partly due to the fact that they don't have the ability, perhaps the talent or the vision to do this, are not coming out with the wealth of new product that we are. And so the innovation and the technology that's being presented to you here is second to none and not being brought out by many other companies, if any at all. Beginning of the year, when we sh showed you or brought out to you the VLED optical modules, we highlighted the fact that performance, technology, and innovation were all rolled up into one, into a module that could be presented in some 30-some-odd different luminaires, both in the US architectural and the Sun Valley product line. So when we highlight to you now the tsunami, which is the exciting new outdoor fixture that we're highlighting to you, what do you think we're going to say? Well, we're going to tell you again, yes, indeed, that this is the new US architectural lighting. The new US architectural lighting is highlighted by product that performs, by product that is unique design, by product that has technology reeking from every corner of it, by product that is cataloged in a fashion that your specification community is used to seeing and can understand and, and, and can, can, can adopt and, and, and get comfortable with. And the innovation that's coming out from this company is second to none. Again, we want to highlight to you that since July of last year, this company has made a complete turnaround in its presentation to you in the marketplace. And that's a big concern to us. In the past year, since July of 2009, we brought out to you three primary new products and one technological breakthrough. We brought out to you the Camber Luminaire, Walmart Luminaire, the Tornado Bollard, now Tsunami, and the VLED optical modules, which no one else in the industry has. We brought new cataloging format that's geared to the specification market to you, and an aggressive product introduction and promotion a campaign as far as putting samples in your hands, new cataloging in your hands, commission levels in your hands that, that, that reward you for work that you do, in the past nine or 12 months, we went and did the AIA Expo in, in um, uh, June here in Miami. We've done a number of agency shows and have other agency shows planned for the future. We've been conducting seminars in the territories, put together with various agencies who have had ideas on different types of, of elements to highlight with their specifiers, with their developers. We've been doing territory-specific webcasts. It's so all being produced in the last 12 months to get out there and make an impact on the marketplace. That's an important element for us because we're going to continue to do this for the balance of 2010. To continue new cataloging of current product, within the next 30 days, you're going to see a new heirloom catalog. We're calling it the heirloom collection that pulls together eight different pieces of literature to put all of all three of the heirloom products fixtures into one book, very similar looking to, to what you see here in Tsunami. And then we're working on the DS series. As we go through the US architectural product and bring it up to this current scope, we're putting it into the, into the frame of mind that as we made it up the, the mature product with the new product, it's all specification viable. We need to be out there calling on the specification community, creating, creating the projects, not sitting back and waiting for them to happen. By year's end, you'll have two more primary products, new primary products that will be brought about. These things have been going on since July of 2009 and through the, will be going on through the balance of this year. But there's one other thing that we've done as well. We realize that for many of you, this type of approach is different than what your, your marketing format is. It might not be, you might not, well, this, this approach might not be suited to the type of agency you are. We don't want you to be burdened as a result of that. If the direction that this company is now going in doesn't fit within the direction of your agency, we want to take that burden off you and we'll put it on someone else. So as a result, in the past, I'll say since January of last year, we've made very quietly made agency changes affecting 13 territories. And 
we'll continue to do that as appropriate. We need to do that in order to make sure that the people that are representing our line and that are working with the balance of the agencies that we're all pulling together as a team. We need agencies out there creating specifications that go into your territory, and we need agencies like you who can close those specifications as they come into your territory so that both of you can make money. What we don't need to do is to continue in the, in the habit of just going out there and camping on top of other people's specifications. Now, we already have the luxury of an outstanding manufacturing base here when it comes to producing things like Illuminator and Versalux and other products of that ilk, and we'll continue to do that so that we can provide, be a low-cost provider and be competitive under any circumstances. But it's not just that anymore, ladies and gentlemen. We need you to be out there representing what we're calling the new U.S. architectural lighting by creating the specification. You need to be the one in control over creating the standard on the job, not responding to it when it comes out. So that means as we go out in the field to show new product samples, if we show them to engineers, probably going to be showing them history because the job's already pretty much done. We need you to be out there showing product samples to, getting the literature in the hands of, and calling on architects, developers, landscape architects, lighting designers, site planners, those types of disciplines that are the visionaries for the projects that are working on those projects when it's still scrub brush out there waiting to be leveled off, waiting to be graded, and waiting for the roads to go in. That's the kind of work, that, that's the kind of effort that needs to be put into the new U.S. architectural lighting. We need you to be making specifier calls with our visiting sales managers. They're not going to come into town anymore and talk to you about how poorly your numbers were because you didn't sell some substitution on a job. And when we say creating the specification, that doesn't mean getting on a shopping list with a bunch of other manufacturers as an approval to someone else's spec. That means creating a standard that no one else can meet. You put the tsunami on a specification along with camber or tornado, the tornado bollard with the VLED optical system, and you tell me how many other of your competitors are going to be out there and legitimately go up against you with that specification. But we need your help in this. We need you to be out there working with us to make it happen. And again, as we say, if this is not the type of approach that 